hello and <laughs> welcome to this episode where we'll be looking at cloud hoppers. Now you can go ballooning, just you and a fuel tank and a massive weed whacker. The cloud hopper gives a pilot a unique experience, unlike any other form of aircraft. Sitting in a chair, high in the sky with your legs dangling beneath you, in near silence. So what exactly is a cloud hopper compared with a normal hot air balloon? Well, the big fundamental difference is, it's a lot smaller, and it doesn't have a basket. Instead of having the traditional wicker woven basket, in which one, two, three, anything up to thirty passengers can fly, the pilot flies solo, strapped onto the fuel tank and sitting in a swing seat suspended beneath the canopy of the balloon. To take a look back through the history books at the history of cloud hoppers is to take a look back at the history of hot air ballooning as we know it in the modern era. In the late 1960s, a small group of experimenters strapped themselves into chairs with fuel tanks and small burners above their heads and launched themselves into the unknown. In the 1980s, cloud hoppers were commonly seen around the British ballooning circuit as partners to larger hot air balloons that were carrying marketing. Here we can see a Financial Times sponsored balloon taking off. This would have been used in partnership with special shapes and regular shaped balloons and would have been something of a marketing gimmick pilot dangling from a balloon drifting off into the sky. Different manufacturers took different approaches to how to design a balloon. The term cloud hopper is commonly used for all hang balloons or balloons where the pilot is suspended outside of a basket. Okay, so as a pilot then flying in this thing, it's fairly restrictive in terms of your ability to move your head and you would be expected to wear a helmet, because if nothing else, just be out your head. These two whacking great big bolts that hold the thing together. And effectively, I'm sat on a little swing seat, which I've probably not got fitted right, but it's taken me about an hour to get to the point where I'm actually wearing the thing. Um, just to my right here is a sparker, a piece of electric sparker allows the burner above my head to stay lit. Uh, the pilot light, the main burner, the coils, etc. And the blast valve just here to my left. And on this side, a little on and off switch. It's quite advanced really, to have a battery and a power pack which measures how much fuel is in the tank. Because if you can imagine when you're flying, you have no ability to see how much fuel there is in the tank. See there, but they've got a harness there. Comes between my legs. Plastic seat. It's a kiddie swing seat for the fuel system. Aluminium tank on my back. Just crab sideways towards you. Aluminium tank on my back. Children's swing seat underneath my bum. Burner above me. Aluminium shoulder pads as they're known in the trade just here. But this is how it was done in the 1980s to the early 1990s when hoppering became Kind of a gentleman's sport and a little bit more comfortable. This was really designed as a bit of a gimmick uh, for marketing and advertising purposes. For pilots would do a very short hop. It's a very short uh, flight duration with a tank of that size. Press shot, if you want to call it that. Not really designed for comfort, more for uh, short one-off use. And I can understand why pilots would fly these things in very light conditions. Modern-day hopper. Step forward a generation involves cushions. And 
padded leather and all that kind of thing. So very different experience hoppering, I would imagine, in the 1980s. Get used to it after a while, but my shoulders are going to hurt a little bit later on. I think with perhaps a lot more adjustment, I could actually make this thing comfortable. So to explain uh, what it's like, and give you a little bit of a feel for what it's like to be in a cloud hopper. Uh, we are just in the one pilot balloon uh, with our feet dangling onto the ground and at the moment there's obviously there's no balloon above me so I've got a little bit of time to explain some of the process which would normally be going on as we're flying. So we've got the burner just above our heads here and we can squeeze these triggers uh, etc to uh, make the burner burn. We can see our pressure gauges. If I can learn how to hold the camera we can we've got our pilot lights, our main burners, our pressure gauges above us uh, and then you can see above my head and behind me a small circular object there which is a mirror. Um, the fuel tank for this balloon is positioned way back behind my head here and I'm leaning my back against the fuel tank itself and so to be able to read whether there's any fuel in the tank or not we have to look up at this mirror behind us check the gauge and read the gauge from the top of the tank behind us so if I flick the camera around for you at the moment I'm just sat on the floor uh, in a car park um, so it's nothing interesting to see from this side, but quite often you see this picture of uh, people's feet dangling down from the balloon. And to hold me in position, got my gloves there, but to hold me in position there is a five point harness bracket like this. In fact this home built balloon uh, uses a, um, a racing seat uh, from a high performance car. I just get out of the seat, we can have a look at that. There is the seat of the car, uh, my back leaning against the fuel tank here, the burner, its various valves and pressure gauges above us, and the fuel tank around the back with its fuel quantity gauge on the top, which we can only see as we said before, via a mirror positioned here over the pilot's head. Inflation of a cloud hopper takes place in a very similar manner to a normal hot air balloon, with cold air being driven in inside the canopy through the use of a petrol driven inflation fan. Hot air is then added by the burner and the balloon stands itself vertically. Hoppers are a little bit trickier than a large balloon in terms of the distance between the flame and the fabric is much closer, so hoppers tend to be used in lower wind speed conditions. Having stood the balloon vertical, Extra heat is piled inside the balloon. The balloon is normally operated around 100 degrees centigrade. The fabric is capable of lasting above the temperature of 135 degrees for short periods of time. The size of the balloon, the volume of the balloon inside the envelope, dictates how much lift can be generated and how much weight can be carried as the pilot, fuel and burner system. Once the balloon has been stood vertically, the pilot must strap themselves into the harness. Harness arrangements vary a great deal, as you've seen earlier in the video. And sometimes this can take a long time to do, or sometimes can be very quick. Modern day hoppers often carry five point harnesses, with the pilot positioning themselves in the seat and simply clipping themselves in and ready to lift off.
because of the balloons that are shown in this video vary between 17,000 cubic feet and 35,000 cubic feet. When we measure the size of hot air balloons, we often talk in terms of cubic feet. This is because we measure the lift generated by each cubic foot. And so it's quite difficult to compare the sizes of different hot air balloons. Here we have two balloons taking off next to each other, the hopper on the right and a normal 105,000 cubic foot balloon taking off on the left. The 105,000 cubic foot balloon would carry roughly four or five passengers, whereas the hopper at 28,000 to 30,000 cubic feet just carries the one plus the fuel. Again, to give you an idea of scale, two balloons compared with each other launching from the same location. As manufacturers have played with the idea and pilots have enjoyed the experience of flying outside a basket, here we have a balloon of 42,000 cubic feet being inflated, which is designed to carry two people in an air chair. The metal structural framework allows the pilot and passenger to sit side by side, but uses the same basic concept as a cloud hopper or sky chariot. Here we can see them launching and drifting away. Cloud hoppering is sometimes referred to as an antisocial sport, often taking place with just one or two people involved, a small family car for example, carrying the equipment, but that doesn't mean you have to do hoppering alone. And it's not uncommon throughout the summer season for pilots to gather at large festivals and hopper pilots to take part as well. There are then special events such as the UK's One Man Meet, which has been running for many years, celebrates solo flying. Thank you very much for your help. All right. All right. Nice See you in a field somewhere. <laughs> okay, hands up. Thank you very much. See you later, guys. Oh, till I find a field that I want to go down in. Not particularly long, I don't think. This one looks good. <laughs> Turn around for the camera shot. Bye! <laughs> Good morning world! a very different experience to landing in a normal hot air balloon. You don't have the protection of the basket and if you wish to drag yourself across a field in high winds there's little or nothing to stop you being bumped and bounced around. Pilots often learn this by experience. Landing a hopper requires some special techniques. 
it has to be considered that the forward motion of the balloon will, will drag you over or will lean you forwards if you're facing forwards. This can be somewhat painful with the tank positioned just behind you. It can push you down face first into the dirt. So the best way to land is to approach the landing site side on or facing backwards. This requires a little bit of skill in terms of looking over your shoulder while navigating and beginning to drop the balloon as low as possible to the ground. But depending on the design of your aircraft, you may need to rotate the entire balloon using special vents in the side of the balloon called rotation vents. Or if you have a hopper which can be rotated independently of the envelope, such as seen in this video, you will need to position yourself correctly so that as you drift in and touch the ground, you're not facing forward, but sideways on. Turns out that that spins you around. Okay, and it moves you backwards onto the ground. Ah, I guess I'm landing in this field. <laughs>